Okay, guys, welcome back. Onda met hers. She is surprised. She apologizes, but then sees that his own hand is severely wounded. Ahi is tense to why Sanam is distraught. She tries to sit, but he refrains his hand and says it's all right. He storms out hastily why Sanam wonders what's wrong with Tanvi and why he's doing so, and presumes Tanvi must have said something, hence pretending to be upset and angry with her. She wonders the real mystery behind his father's mother and is determined to solve the puzzle for which she has to stay here. She thinks Tanvi will try everything to get her side and throw her out of the house, but she resolves she won't leave this house and I heal. While Tanvi is filming in her room, Sanam finds her and then thinks if she lands her hand on the property papers, she would hide them so that she gets some time to find out about the actual mystery behind her heel's father's mother. She finds Tanvi giving the papers back in the arm mirror. Tanvi walks out while Sanam stands tense. While Sanam is rummaging through Tanvi's files and folders, she finally finds the folder. Just then, she finds Tanvi walking into her room, who remembered something in the hallway and turns around. Sanam ducks behind the bed while Tanvi comes trying to search something on the bed and then finds her beads. Finally, but in oblivion, laying her feet on Sanam's hand and who isn't able to scream and muffles her voice so as not to be heard. Tanvi leaves while Sanam is in great pain. Seha enters the room and is surprised to find it decorated with balloon and a romantic ambience. Then she's blindfolded by Rehan, who comes in front of her while she is shocked. He says he knows he hasn't said yes and she won't find such a boring and unromantic boy, but he is willing to change himself for her, but one thing shall never change. He bends down on his knees, shocking her and says that his love for her shall never change. He takes out an engagement ring while Seha is overwhelmed. He presents it to her, saying this is the start to his new life. She staring at why he says she brought happiness into his life and made him feel how incomplete he is and asks her if she shall complete his life. She stands shocked and silenced. He apologizes for being too poetic and then directly asks her in a proposal, Will you marry me? Seha is all the more shocked and in a daze as he takes the ring out of the box and holds her hand ahead and is about to place the ring in an engagement finger when a sudden knock startles them both. He goes to check who it is and sees many policemen and women. Seha is scared. Rehan asks what the matter is while they say they have come to arrest her. Rehan is shocked and boggled too and says there must have been a misunderstanding. He tells Rehan this girl is a thief and a fraud and she has been searched for a long time. Seha is shocked. The police says today they have evidence too who would testify against her. The jeweler walks in while Seha is frustrated at the bad timing. As the jeweler starts telling about Seha, Rehan asks him to stop talking nonsense. The jeweler asks him to ask her instead. He asks her to go ahead and falsify them all, but she stands speechless. He insists why he asks her not to be scared that till the time he's here, they can't touch her. Rehan asks her to tell them that she isn't who they think she is, why she stands silent. She remembers Rehan's trust on her and her past moments with him. When he insists her to speak, Seha breaks down, saying they are not lying and are indeed correct about her. Rehan is shattered and distraught at past memory flash in front of him. She holds, she adds that there was more more truth that she herself wanted to tell all this to him. He's shocked why she begs him to trust her as she had decided to tell him her reality. The jeweler taunts her that none can trust her. Maybe this girl was after Rehan's money too. Rehan is hot and appalled. Seha says it's true she came here for his money, but it's not that anymore. And she has changed now and had wanted to tell him the complete truth. Rehan starts breaking things in rage, saying that he had told her that he can't stand lies and she was the sole truth of his life. And he trusted her more than himself and was willing to sacrifice even his life for her. But she also turned out to be one more lie. She tries to convince him, but he says he doesn't want to hear anything. He takes her hand and hands her over to the police. Seha keeps protesting innocence, but Rehan says he doesn't want to hear anything and finally stops them as they drag Seha outside. All are tense while Seha looks at him in anticipation. He comes and confronts her, asking how much she stole. The jeweler names the amount and then gives the 10 lakh that the jeweler had lost. He requests the jeweler to take back the keys. The jeweler agrees and asks the police to let them go. The police lets go of Seha and says that she's been left as he doesn't have evidence of any other theft. They all leave while Seha and Rehan confront each other. Rehan turns away while Seha tries to talk to him. 
She hesitantly places a hand on his shoulder, but he jerks it away, eyeing her angrily, asking her to be out of his life forever. He leaves while she stands heartbroken and distraught. She collapses on the floor, teary eyed and emotional, as past memories flash through her mind. Ahil finds Sanam attending to his hand wound and is in a great deal of pain and is happy that he remembers the way Sanam took care of him when he needed her. He's about to come in, but then Shritan walks past. Sanam finds him in the hallway and calls out to him, but he pretends not to notice and leaves when actually he hides behind the pillar, distraught at their situation after their newfound love and emotions for each other. Sanam is distraught too and Ahil is then seeing her cry. Ahil's heart reaches out to her, but he feels helpless and leaves finally. In the night, Sanam comes to her room to find Ahil tense and Tanvi waiting for her. She wonders if they got to know that she hid the papers. Tanvi asks her to come inside as they were waiting for her. Sanam says to Ahil that she just wanted to talk to him for a minute before they signed the prep to property papers and wanted to clarify everything. Tanvi asks her to do that so later and that the property papers should be signed first and says she thought this moment of happiness should be more memorable so that everybody can join in the chair. Sanam is shocked to find papers in her hand. Tanvi asks Ahil to go along while she just comes. Ahil watches Sanam as he moves past her and then recently walks out. Sanam is tensed. Tanvi comes to her asking what happened and if she got a shock and if she actually thought she could defeat her by taking advantage of her blindness, that she has smell instincts and sensed her too. She asks her to come along to sign the papers along with her husband Ahil, just like she wanted and Tanvi decided to fulfill. She leaves saying that she's waiting for her. Sanam takes out the folder she had hidden and finds there are blank pages of the notary inside. She is boggled and confused. Downstairs, all sits down for signing the papers. Sanam asks Ahil if his hand is okay now and isn't paining. He doesn't reply. Tanvi says today is very important as with their signatures, the property shall go to its rightful owner as Nawab Sahib wanted. Tanvi thinks once it happens, it won't be long before everything is in her name. All wait tensely. Tanvi asks Sanam to sign. Ahil and Sanam eye each other tensely. Tanvi asks if Ahil if Sanam signed the papers and when Ahil tensely doesn't respond, Tanvi asks Sanam what's taking so long as the lawyer too is waiting. Sanam finally takes out her bandaged injured hand from under her dupata. Sanam remembers Ahil's statement about how signing the papers would mean the end of their relationship. Ahil is shocked to see her hand bandaged. All are surprised too. Tanvi is tense to know that Sanam has a bandage on. Ahio asks Sanam what happened and she says that a cat attacked her hand, very dangerous, and she tries her best to save herself but still got hurt. She asks Tanvi smilingly who is frustrated herself. The lady applauds Razia for having fulfilled her final wish that now she would fulfill her side of the promise and tells Razia that she would find Seher at the same temple where she got this prasad from today. Razia is pleased. Raza is frustrated, waiting outside the temple for Seha and thinks that all this was a lie and starts lamenting about the work she's doing in vain. She's oblivious that just then Seha starts walking up the stairs, depressed and distraught herself. She accidentally steps on her feet and she's about to scold the woman when Raza is shocked to find herself confronted with Seha, the person whom she wanted to see. She's shocked beyond belief. Seha stands in front of the Lord, teary eyed and emotional. She asks the Lord why this happened to her, adding that she always thought he gave her new life, new support and new hope, and asks what big crime she committed as she had ever known ever. She says for the first time she felt she had someone who could say she was his by meeting Rehan and felt she could be more than a thief, but she accuses she he didn't support her and for the first time she had a dream other than being rich and had started dreaming of a different world but he shattered all, all of it at once that she wanted to say everything to him but the lord took it all that she may be bad but rehan is a nice soul and why did he have to go through all of that for the first time she felt bad for rehan she was trying to steal him and she did a nice thing for once but the Lord broke Rehan's heart and feet too badly that everyone was right that she is an orphan and she has been stealing as she just wants money and nothing else and hence she couldn't think of love and marriage and only she is to be blamed that she thought she could move on 
forgetting about her past that from today her life is only for stealing and she knows she's capable of just that and that her life mission from now on shall to become rich by theft and fraud that she doesn't want to love and just be rich and if her destiny is to be a thief then so be it and she knows the lord has favored her till now and will do again till Raza comes and tells her that when a person takes the right path, it never time too late. That she too has a work from her, a work that only she can do. Seha is confused.